it sometimes the number is a little bit smaller or the number is a little bit bigger. Huh? And just like all the tissue structure, the visceral area is very, very dependent on this quality. Huh? So you can see that the vascular system is everywhere important, huh? but especially if we see it on the visceral uh, system, and that's when we do the Boral work, and we have first our view going a little bit to the vas to the visceral system, and we see a huge impact from the vascular system on the visceral area. So we also are going to see at the end the combinations of how to treat the, the arteries, how to treat the vessels together with the organs. Uh, <clears throat> in osteopathy, uh, we take osteopathy, and I think the visceral or the vascular manipulation belongs to the osteopathy. Uh, a lot of people like to fall back on the work of Andrew Taylor still. And Andrew Taylor still said the work, the rule of the artery and vein is supreme. Uh, he also talks not only about the rule, but also about the law uh, of the artery and the vein. And he talks about when it is disrupted, uh, you have an impaired blood flow, and that leads to a disease. Uh, so uh, um, restoring this blood flow or restoring these vessels is a foundation for the therapeutic success. Uh, although uh, the blood supply is believed to play a role in the patient's health and 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 uh, oh patient's health and health oh, it's a double so I'm a little bit confused. Huh? There are only a few people who treat the vascular system and that's also me inclusive. I did osteopathy I started in the 80s huh? and um, I did it in three different schools and that's uh, not because uh, I did want it to change the schools, but I, with the first two, I was not so satisfied. And so in the third school, I was very satisfied. But we learned a lot of things, a lot of good things, a lot of things, basics for the osteopathy. It was a subtle academy. But I was really, everyone talks about treating the vascular system is the very important thing, but nobody treated it. And that's the reason that is so nice that Jean-Pierre and Alain started doing that. And especially the same I had with the nerves. We talk a lot about nerves. Also, the nerves are very important in, in, the, in the osteopathy, but nobody treated them. So if we go back to Mr. Still, Andrew Taylor Still, he lived a long time ago. And especially he talked a lot about, about the fluidal movements of the body. And we're going to see it after long, afterwards. I'm going to explain a little bit more how important it was for him. Uh, and some basic sentences that he gave, life is showing in the form of movements. And the second box is where movement cannot develop freely, the body will become ill or development will be inhib inhibited. And that's uh, the osteopathy. That's the thing the osteopathy has to ensure. Uh, to, 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 uh, the osteopathy has to ensure that the principle of vitality can land into the periphery of the tissues. And you have a lot of ways that from the vitality go into the periphery of the tissue, but one important way is the vascular system. Uh, and if this is not possible, uh, the osteopath, osteopath has to move, remove all the obstacles that he finds. So all the dysfunctions and the lesions, so this blood flow, uh, this, these vital forces can circulate free. Uh, and if we see what still thought, still thought that these obstructions uh, or the origin of diseases uh, was uh, happened in the connective tissue, had its origin in the connective tissue, uh, a tense connective tissue, uh, not only the pulls, pulls bones out of position, compresses nerve, blood, and lymph lymphatic vessels, but also hinders the flood of ex extracellular, extracellular fluid. Uh, so even he said we can see the connective tissue as an independent system uh, and we can uh, um, investigate the system and we can treat this, this, this um, connective tissue. Some people say even uh, osteopathy is more or less the treatment of the connective tissue and some of the waves is true because if we see a lot of techniques that we do uh, the connective tissue plays a very important role in that. And the last thing that we have a very uh, uh, important sentence, also a sentence from Still, 
for the treatment is find it, fix it, and leave it alone. That means we have to find it. That's our investigation. We have to fix it. That's our treatment. And the very important thing is also to leave it alone. And nature will do the rest. Uh, and there is one thing maybe we should think about it if nature has the possibility to do the rest. But that's a point that we I'm going to talk about a little bit later. So <clears throat> the basic of the treatments. Uh, um, uh, again, uh, the thing is, it's often assumed that all these structures do not necessarily need to be treated by themselves. Uh, and a lot of osteopaths have the same as um, chiropractors sometimes have or in manual therapy uh, by treating joints, muscles and fascia. Uh, that's enough. Uh, and maybe some nervous and organs. Uh, and um, we don't treat so much the, the vascular system. Uh, and if we, by treating the joints, the muscular fascia, and the, the organs and so, uh, we have a restore of the birth blood circulation system, but most of the time it's not enough. And therefore we need additional vascular treatments. Uh, and that's sometimes required, not always. Uh. So a small advice uh, is orking, that means it in working with the arteries, should play an important role in your therapeutic work. And that's something I really think is very, very important. Eh? As starting in an osteopath, I didn't do very much work in my arteries. Now, at the time, I work a lot, of, a lot on arteries. And they're very, eh? they're very good to treat. And they're very grateful if you take them into your practice. Eh? Um, yeah, make them as good as free as possible. I think that's the that's the most important thing the last sentence says. Yeah. Treatment of the vessels uh, was according to Jean-Pierre Barral and Alain Corbier. So there are, I think, I, I don't think there are a lot of ways of treating the, the vascular system because a lot of people don't treat them. Uh, so that's the reason why I was so satisfied that Jean-Pierre Barral and Alain Corbier did that. Uh, and that, that doesn't mean that they that it means that it was completely new. Uh, but the thing that their speciality is, and that the things that they can do very well, to put it really in a new solid visceral frame. Uh, and that's uh, if you read the books, uh, you, you, it's, it's, it's very easy to get clear uh, how how specialized you're in that. Uh, and uh, that's really a thing that putting together the anatomy, the physiology, and pioneer, the, their pioneering spirit uh, that remains unbroken for all these decades that they do that. And still after, I think Jean-Pierre works now about 40 years and, and Alain also have a long time uh, and still uh, developing new things. And that's really very nice to be part of it. And, so, and that's the reason why on their work on, on their pioneering, uh, we have a new approach of treatment of the visceral vessels. And, Arteries are muscular and elastic in structure and covered with a network uh, of long of nerves uh, for long stretches. So what we have here is that arteries are not only arteries, uh, and that's also uh, what Jean-Pierre and Alain says. Uh, they're not, they have some kind of muscular elastic. That's also a very uh, medical thing uh, that we can work with. But also don't forget they are very covered with nerves. Uh, and there you can see them uh, as long fascia structures because they're most, most of the part that the vessels are made of is connective tissue. Uh, for, so, so for that reason that what we have that the vessels respond very well to manual techniques uh, and to be effective, these man manipulations, and that's a very th typical thing you hear, hear from Jean-Pierre and also from Alain always say, you have to be very specific and accurate, or like Jean-Pierre always said, you have to be very precise. The diagnostics is the entirely of the entirety of all measures that lead to a diagnosis, and is a method of specific or job specific. So it can be method specific. Oh, that's so difficult to say or job specific. Huh? It does make a difference if you use it as a physiotherapist, sometimes as use it as, a, uh, as an osteopath. Huh? And 
And also, on the other hand, it has a different meaning for some therapies that we use uh, if we see the massage or if we have osteopathy. Uh, in the end, it would all would do the same, but the approach will be a little bit difficult. So for the visceral vascular manipulation, it means that therapists will have to deal with both medical diagnosis and osteopathic diagnosis. So that's the thing that we'd have to talk about. Uh, because if we do diagnostics, we always have to decide between are we doing medical tests or are we doing osteopathic tests? Uh, I'm going to repeat it a few times uh, because a lot of tests that we think they're osteopathic, in reality, they're medical tests. Uh, so you can see an Edson right more or less on a medical test as also on an osteopathic test, but doing a measurement of a blood pressure, that's a typically medical test. And if you see the listening, listening is not very medical, it's very osteopathic. Eh? And if we, see, if we do medical diagnostics, and that's very important if we do osteopathy, we first have to clarify a few things eh? because sometimes the very the vascular system can be so ill if we see if somebody has a heart attack also heart is part of the vascular system this patient is not an osteopathic patient it's an emergency so if somebody comes into your office you say i have a pain of the chest after after getting up the stairs to come into your office uh, and i didn't have it before that's not a patient you're going to treat it's a patient uh, you're going to uh, you're going to see it as an emergency and you're going to call an ambulance. Uh, there's also some infection disease that you have uh, that is maybe are not our patients. And especially if infection disease have to do with the blood or the vascular system, they are more medical cases. Uh, or whether the patient is experiencing, experiencing contraindications or disabilities that may require a medical, medical clarification or therapy. Uh, that means uh, if we have some diseases and there's not enough investigated medically, it's good to do that first. But if we have this medical clarification, it's easy to do osteopathy. Uh, so, and therefore, uh, we have to think about, also we have to think about the contraindications that we have. Uh, and especially the medical science gives a lot of explanations for these um, contraindications. Uh, Infection disease, I can see it in Germany. If you have a patient who has a very big ill disease, like if you have Ebola, you're not going to treat them in your office. That's clear. Yeah? So with the contraindication, the focus will be on diseases in the internal and mainly the cardiovascular area. Yeah? That's also very important. So uh, I put it a little bit more that we see the vascular treatment as part of the visceral treatment. As, as the vascular system more as part also of the um, visceral uh, system. And we see uh, if we have problems with the vascularization, uh, a lot of times it has to do also with the visceral area. In this event, that does, uh, in, in the event uh, that this does not apply, so the contraindication in both therapists uh, are in favor of an osteopathic treatment, uh, the, patent, the path for the treatment is clear now. Uh, so, after that point, you can see it's my patient. Uh, so, since the osteopathy is a manual diagnostic and, and therapeutic measure, manual skills are used precisely and consistently. That what, uh, that what I said before. Uh, and in the necessity, a necessity is sensible to check the diagnosis findings again and again during the course of the treatment. That means if you do osteopathy, huh? you don't start diagnosing. Huh? You do your treatment, and after treatment, you do your listening again, or you do maybe your tests again. So it's an ongoing pro process of um, treating and, and, and doing diagnosis. Huh? So maybe also to renew your treatment. Huh? So what I said, diagnosis is an ongoing process in the vascular osteopathic treatment. Huh? And if an osteopathic treatment is not successful, consider uh, that, the, that the diagnosis maybe wasn't right and you have to do your examination again. A lot of things we have that we're very good in our examination and sometimes we're sure we have to treat it on a certain way and we, 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 we see that it doesn't work out. So consider every time maybe it's good uh, to start uh, doing your diagnosis again.
there is a lot of movement in the circulation in the vascular system you also have a lot of movement from the uh, vessels that we have over here so maybe uh, what i like to do is uh, when we talk about movements uh, what do movements are we dealing with or what movements are we talk about uh, so we have inherent movements that you see and uh, the small red uh, circle where we have over there to the inherent movements we have the cranial sacral rhythm or the primary respiratory movements you can see them as a circulation in the body and they don't go through vessels but it's a kind of as a kind of a circulation that you have that is not catched in the vascular system but it ends in the circular vascular system and it comes out of the vascular system so also for the cranial sacral fluid that we have uh, the vascular system might be important and on the other hand we have motilities uh, and especially if we see the motilities on a different level uh, we have the osteopathy, osteopathic uh, motility uh, that's a rhythmic movement between an embryonic origin and a postnatal end position that what we call um, motility uh, if you see medicine it's something completely different uh, it's the totally of the movements that consci not consciously are controlled and if we see the heart as a central motor of the body uh, for the medicine the heart the movement of the hearts the beating of the hearts uh, is a motility same as we have in the stomach is the peristaltics so find, finding a pulse is more or less a kind of motility that you can find if we see motility in the biology it means it's more than mobility in an organism or a cell and that's very interesting to see because if we take still he says we find the restrictions in the connective tissue and that's true uh, we do it but the connective tissue is more or less everywhere the same. In organs, you have very specific cells. If you take the, the liver or if you take the brain, uh, you have very, very specific cells who are not cells like the cells from the connective tissue. And if we see VM6, uh, or if we see uh, also treating the vascular system, you're coming into very specific cells that have to do with the vascular system. And these specific cells also have their rhythm and their expressions. What still says, uh, find it, fix it, and leave it. Uh, and nature will do the rest. Is nature, has nature the possibility to do that? Uh, because we presume that nature will do the rest. And maybe one movement that helps us that maybe these nature has the power to do what he needs to do are the inner movements so uh, what's the inner movement of the vascular system it's very similar to that what we find in the craniosacral rhythm uh, and if we see the organs it's very similar to what the organs do because how the organs find a place they take also the vascular system and the movements are very similar to that of the organs so it's very very important to put your attention also on the on the, the motility of the vascular system or the, as, as the same as you do as you put the motility on the on the organ yeah and for the biology uh, the organism or a cell every cell has its movement and it's also an expression of fluidity yeah? so if we see some other movements that we have uh, this the mobility that's uh, the agility or movements that we have uh, most of the time is the movements that we do or the uh, the ability to move maybe from one place to another uh, and on the other hand you have the motivity uh, more or less the ability to move more or less maybe the coordination that we have uh, so for the coordination maybe the vascular system direct is not so very important for the mobility uh, yes it might be very important we're going to see it if we talk about the six steps that we do by having a um, circular system and a vascular system that has the ability to move free uh, my whole body mobility will be doing better and if i have a vascular system we can move free also my coordination might be better because if i have restrictive uh, a restrictive vascular system uh, it's going to restrict also the movements of the body and if we turn that a little bit round we have round we have 
motricity. Uh, with motricity, we can see it on a dynamic or static way. And motricity means that the movements of the organs uh, were generated from the muscular skeletal apparatus. Uh, and that also means that the vascular system is moved by the muscular uh, musculoskeletal skeletal apparatus. Uh, is it more dynamic? Uh, it can have maybe a compensatory function for the organ. Is it more static? It gives a more stabilization for that organ. And that's also for the artery. Uh, if you see it on the, if you see the motricity uh, on the more larger structures, statically way, uh, there's the transverse structures of the body, the diaphragms. Uh, and on the other hand, the psoas does it. But also arteries give st static, stabilize the body. Uh, and that's very important to see. Uh, so you see a good functioning vascular system uh, is working on a very, very different levels of the body. So don't forget your, of course, your movements. We're going to mobilize. We do motivity, motricity. But don't forget your inherent movements because they're very, very important. Yeah? So if we see oh, diagnostic and treatment uh, as we used to do it in the visceral system and also we do it on the neural system and also we do it on the organs of on the, 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 the joints, there's also something, always something that's repeating. Yeah? Sure, we have to do an anamnesis because we know a little bit, we have to know a little bit about the history of the patient, especially for the vascular system, I told already, is very, very important. Eh? How, is, uh, how can you, how fit are you? Um, are you able to, to do long walks? Uh, do you have a lot of energy or is your energy very low? Uh, do you have pain in the chest? And so on. You can do inspections. Uh, the typical inspections are, do you see any veins who are blowing up? The color of the skin, uh, maybe it's too, 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 too white, maybe it's too red. Uh, so we have a lot of inspection where we can see how the vascular system is doing. Palpation, of course, uh, if we see the eudemas, and also we see the pulses, and we can do some functional testing. Uh, take, for instance, uh, an Aston Rye test, who is, can be very helpful for to find out how the blood supply is in the arm, uh, what is very important. You can also do an Aston Rye test. We don't call it that's right. Uh, if you want to see how the blood supply is for the leg, uh, so these things that we said already can be very osteopathic, osteopathic but they are very, very medical. Uh, don't forget your medical questions, but because they're, they are very, very important. They give a lot of information how the patient is doing. And again, is it your patient or is it not patient? Do you have to maybe send him to a doctor first? Uh, so if we see the osteopathic. Um, diagnosis, uh, it's most of the time we do a listening. We do a general listening. I'm in in, in uh, the red one is the general emotional listening. Yes, we also have some emotional listening that we do. Uh, we see that the energy is more, gives us a listening more than the tissue. We have our manual thermal diagnosis that we do uh, because it tells us where more activity is maybe even more inflammation is, but it's more the most of the time, there is more activity. Uh, and if there is more activity, it most, most of the time tells more about the energy or less about the tissue. Uh, so if we have a general listening, we know a little bit where we have to treat. We do a local, local listening and that tells more or less where exactly we have to be. To be honest, huh? the listening first go most of the time to the bigger or to the larger spaces. And to find, especially in the beginning, to do a low listening on the vascular system is not always very easy. Huh? It is easy on the aorta, but it's more difficult on the very, very small vessels that we have sometimes deep in the pelvis. Huh? What I like to do is work with motility, huh? because motility is an expression of how fluids how movement, how energy can express itself in the body. Eh? And the better the motility goes, and motility, I like to see it from all the different ways, eh? is a very, very good expression how more or less how healthy the patient is, and more or less also what abilities have, have, does he have that nature can do the rest. Think about if the motility, if the medical motility has this problem, if there are problems with the blood flow, if there are problems with the heart, Maybe it's good to first to see if there is a medical problem. You could see that. That's always the decision you have to make. If this medical cleared, you can do your osteopathy as you like. 
Mobility, uh, yes, we can do, uh, if we take it for the, the vascular system, we can mobilize it like any other structure. And again, in the end, after we did the mobilization, I'm gonna do the motility again, because I want to know, is the motility now better? Is nature can do a, does nature can do a good job? Uh, that's the thing that I want to know. Uh, Jean-Pierre says, maybe it's not the first motility is for him not so very necessary. Uh, maybe you do it in the end, uh, because we have such a fine mobility. We have so fine mobilizing techniques. Uh, I'm on the level of mobility when I start testing the mobility. So it's very correct. Uh, it's, it's okay maybe to do the motility only at the end, uh, but I'm, I'm more the motility guy. Uh, I like motility. So treatment is motilization that means treatment of the motility and mobilization that means treatment of the vessels and we can do it in a direct or indirect practice uh, we're going to see when we're going to do the one or when we're going to do the other uh, a very important thing is that we have to do a follow the listening because we're going to compress the vessels uh, to come to the vessels we can stretch them we're going to see so mobilization mobilization by stretching but there's always some kind of compression and also decompression the very nice thing is we're going to do a compression we're going to do a decompression and we do a follow the listening a lot of time in the decompression direction because we have to do with a fluidal system you press in, you're coming into the system, Jean-Pierre was said, you activate the mechanical receptors, then you return a little bit and the tissue will tell you what to do. Yeah? So this follow the listening, if we take it a little bit more simple, you start with a general listening, you start with a local listening, you follow the listening and you do an induction. You encourage the tissue to go on with what it's doing. Yeah? You can do it in an indirect way, uh, that's the way the, the way of ease and you can do it on the direct way you give an impulse in the direct way and you ask the sit tissue okay that's your stretch how are you going to do how it can be specific for you and uh, so follow the listening can also be in direct or in the indirect directions yeah. diagnostic or special assessments uh, of the vessels uh, an artery can be easily distinguished from its surrounding by palpation, uh, round shape, tension, but the very most important thing is, uh, is the pulsation. Uh. The vein has a little tension. The vein is sometimes easy to find, but most of the time it's not so easy to find. Arteries are easy to find and very, very characteristic, characteristic thing of the arteries is the pulsation. Uh. Normally, Palpable vessels have a long, regular cylindrical shape eh, and they feel smooth and even on the surface. Eh? And they have a very slight transverse displaceability and a longitudinal extensibility. So you can move them transverse, same as you do with the nerves or same as you do with the organs, eh? and you have a possibility to stretch them. So their extensibility. Eh? A vessel can be sensitive or painful eh, in comparison to his surroundings. Eh, be very careful if, if these arteries have an inflammation because sometimes it can be something serious. Eh. There is an inflammation eh, and you don't want to make it more worse, especially for the vascular system. Is it everywhere in the body? But be careful with that. Eh. These are the followed palpatory in their pathway. Eh. Oh, sorry. What you're going to do if you see the vessels, uh, we're going to do the palpatory on their pathway. Uh, and most of the time, we start central and we go to distal or we go to periphery. Uh, it's easiest to carry out the palpation, uh, both longitudinally and transversely in the course of the vessel. Uh, thickening, hardening, compressibility, sensitivity, pain, transverse mobility, extensibility are assessed. Uh, and possible, and that's very, very, very important, uh, compare left to right, compare them to the other side, because sometimes you feel uh, how abnormal or how tense one side is. Uh, most of the times, most of the vessels are symmetrically. If you have an aorta, it's not symmetrically, but most of the times, are, most of the, uh, of a lot of, let me say, a lot of, vessels are symmetrically so do compare left to right or compare one vessel to another uh, 
So if you take if you take a vessel that's easy to palpate compared to what you have found. So again, we talked about, and that's when we're going to close the thing of the indication and the contraindication. I think if if we see osteopathy as a systemic therapy, so we treat a system. I don't think it's very useful to talk about indications, and it's not also not not very useful. If we talk about the vascular vascular system, we, we only treat this and this, and for this disease is good and this disease is good. Uh, same with the contraindications, uh, and that's what things that we talk about. Uh, we have contraindications. We have to be medical declared, have need medical clarification. We have infection disease, or we have emergencies. So, the things that we always have to ask ourselves on the beginning of the treatment: Am I allowed to treat this patient? Am I allowed, or may I treat this patient? Yeah. And, and the other thing that's a luxury that we have as therapists, do I want to treat this patient? Yeah. Do I want? Because we can say, I don't want to treat you. Yeah. Not everyone has this right. Yeah. Do I have to treat? That is most of the time are the doctors. Yeah. The medical people have to treat. Yeah. And on a very important question is, do you want to be treated by me huh? and that means that the patient exactly knows what you are going to do so what i do is i explain the patient what i do and i explain i'm going to work on your vessels and he can say oh yes that's very nice oh no that's something that i don't like huh? so may i do i want to do i have to and do you want and that's a very good combination for going into a treatment and for the country case contraindication all these unstable, inflammatory, contagious infections, mental illness, personal disabilities, uh, even if you have sometimes who has a very, very strong abuse, uh, they have a lot of vascular problems. If you have somebody who's very bad on his diabetes, uh, be careful by, by start treating him. Maybe he needs first some medical treatment. And if everything is cleared, you can start do your osteopathic treatment. And then my indication is <clears throat> don't ask yourself if that's the case for the vascular manipulation, but ask yourself what vascular manipulation can do for this case. Huh? You see the sentence again, you see how important he is. I always thought that this sentence was a sentence John Martin Littlejohn made, and somebody in Germany, Christian Hartmann, he knows a lot about osteopathy. He said, no, 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 that's not, I don't know where the sentence comes from. It's not a sentence from John Martin Littlejohn. Uh, it's, it's also not my sentence, but it's a sentence that expresses very much how we do our therapy. Uh, and the indication is always very helpful. And yes, it often leads us uh, to the, where we have to treat, uh, but sometimes it puts us also away from our whole body or holistic treatments. The symptom is very important, but the, don't, guide, don't let you guide too much from the symptom. Huh? Thus, the question is not whether the patient needs to be treated with the vascular, uh, viscerovascular techniques, but when it makes sense or when it is necessary to insert the viscerovascular treatment uh, techniques into the osteopathic treatments. And there is viscerovascular treatment that means for all the vascular that we have. Huh? Maybe along some things where you can permit, if the faucet leaks, uh, it, it arouses suspicion if the plumber has the screwdriver as the only tool with the motto, one tool for all my problems. No, no, that's not correct. You're not only going to treat with vascular techniques. You're going to do osteopathy. All the tissues are important. You only have to decide what techniques, what tissues do I need for my treatment. Yeah? And sometimes I have weeks, I do a lot of more vascular I don't know why, but every have his favorites. Uh, he does it for a, uh, a certain time, and then something else comes. Uh, most of the time, most of the time is to do have to do with the classes that we do. Uh, so the aim of the viscero or the vascular treatments is to restore the normal physiology of the function of the organ in combination with other necessary osteopathic techniques. However, before the vascular structures of the viscera are treated, the surrounding vascular tension has to be largely released. So we're going to see in 
in our six-step protocol how important it is. So are these vascular structures accessible or is the tissue around very tense? Huh? The thing that can be, if you treat the vascular system, the, 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 the tension of the tissue and reduce it, but most of the time it's very helpful to reduce the tension of the tissue before that the vascular system or the blood can easily flow into the tissue when the obstructions in the vessels are reduced. So this affects not only the viscera with the vessels are connected, but also for the nearby organs, joints, muscle, ligaments and fascia. So it's the same with the nerves. The nerves also like a relaxed body or a relaxed tissue where they can work on. So if I treat in my practice, first I release the body from some general tensions. So if I put it now the vascular system inside or if I put the nerves inside, to release the vascular system, no, to, to, if you release the tissue, it's much easier uh, for the blood or for the nerves uh, to do their work in the tissue afterwards. Uh, and in this regard, it's very important to consider how the global uh, regional affects uh, the local. Yeah? So we're coming very local, we have our listening, which is very local, but we need a global awareness. Uh, we have a focal intention, maybe on the vascular system, but we need a global intention of all the tissues that are surrounding. Uh, the soft tissue techniques uh, which are used to improve the mobility and the motility of the viscera or surroundings continue to serve as a starting point for the viscero vascular mobilization. Uh, so wait a minute, okay. This is the... So I talked about, do I start treat the vascular system? Uh, and if I see it in my practice and if I see we have also an osteopathic school in Germany, how we, how we teach our students uh, to, uh, to, to, to how to treat a body in a form of a, more of a protocol. Uh, we, we started to do the six step protocol for the osteopathy. Uh, and I think it's uh, easy to apply to all your techniques. Uh, and the first thing, if we go on the top, you see the fluid in them and the energy. For still, the fluidum and the energy was the most important thing. If you can uh, treat the body, treat the restrictions, treat your dysfunctions with the fluidum or the energy, it's enough. And if it doesn't work, you use your mechanics, you use your uh, tissue techniques, you're going to work on the vessels, you're going to stretch them and so on and so on. So if you see the biodynamic osteopathy, the biodynamic uh, cranial sacral therapy or the uh, cranial osteopathy. Eh? They believe eh, that you can do everything with the flume and the energy. For a certain point, it's correct. But if you if you read still, still says no, 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 no. That is very nice. Yes, if it works out, it's good. But a lot of times, you need to work on the mechanics because only with fluidal techniques, you're not able to release all the restrictions. So the fluidum is very important. You always going to check on how the fluid is doing, how your cranial cycle rhythm, how your energy is flowing. Especially, we feel that energy is flowing to the body. Yes, the movement of the blood is maybe that energy that we talk about because the blood you can compress, you can distract it. The blood is like the energy, and that's the reason because liquid goes to the vessels, liquid flows. And because you can't change this liquid, it's not compressible or distractible, they decided that energy also flows. Yeah, that's the, because you have the same words for energy and liquids. So the energy, the liquids run through the body. And if this goes, it's a sign for that also the vascularization might be doing a good work. So. If it doesn't work, if you have to work on your mechanics, that's the reason why it's green. Huh? You have to first maybe release your general tension. Yeah? Because if this body is very stiff, it's hard, it's, it's, it's like a block, like stone. Huh? You're not able to find any vascular. You, you, you don't feel a pulse, you don't feel an artery. Huh? So you first have to release the big tension of the body. You have to make the purse to the body accessible. And the best thing to do that is work with compression. 
because the depression has a divergence for the means if I worked on the general tension, this body is accessible. Huh? If this body is accessible, maybe you're able to find your pulses, your movements, and anything, anything, anything else. Yeah? Then you're going to take a look at the long fascial chain linking. Huh? That means huh, that we should be able to open up our body. Huh? If the vascular system, if the, 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 the tissue doesn't work very good, Huh? We're going to go to a flexion, adduction, internal rotation. Yeah? It's very typical that we see where we don't feel well, we go into this movement. Huh? And if, we, if our neurology doesn't work anymore, we go into this internal rotation, adduction, and flexion. Yeah? And so we have to be sure, is this body able to open? Yeah? And if this body is able to open, that means that the fascial system is extendable. Huh? You, can, huh? you can stretch your, vas vas your, your fascial system. As we said, nerves and, nerves and uh, vascular as a vessels, huh? you can see them as long fascias. Huh? As long fascias yeah? Because if we have a nerve that's more than 50% connected, if we see it, somebody is making noise in the background, I don't know who it is. Hmm? So, yeah, now it's nice again. So, if we see the long fascial change, you can see the vascular system and the nerve system, you can see them as long fascial change. So, if you do your, uh, your stretches for your fascia, and maybe if you do your exercises with yoga, you're also stretching your vascular system and your nerve system. Yeah. So open up, opening up the body, opening up the body, yeah, is already a treatment for the vascular system and for the nerve system. And most of the time, you're not going to work with the fascia with compression, but you're going to work with stretch, with pull on the fascia. That doesn't mean that you can't treat the fascia with with compression, but the more if you see these long fascial chains, it's easier to pull. And you see, that's the hull that we're working on. And if we have a free hull, if we have a free movement of the whole body, eh, we have a good field where the vascularization can work. We have a good field where the motility can work. And if we don't have a motility, if we don't have a craniosacral rhythm, if we don't feel a pulse, if we don't feel the breathing, if we don't feel the peristaltic of the body very good, we maybe should think about releasing the body, the whole body, the long changes, eh? the long changes, chains. Yeah? If we have a free body, if the body is accessible, the body is also accessible for the general listening, then we may be able to find the key lesion. Eh? That doesn't mean if a body is very tense that I don't find the key lesion, but the key lesion is easier to find when the body has more general relaxation. Yeah? Because if the body is very stiff, eh? It's more difficult to do your general listening. I see that in classes. A lot of people have a lot of problem with the general listening. Sometimes the tension in the body is so high, it is very, very difficult. And the key lesion huh, is maybe the lesion where it's always everything started with. So if we do it a little bit short, a lot of osteopath things, if I have the key lesion and if I released it, everything will be free. The other thing is, other says, yes, that might be true. But most of the time, I'm not able, or maybe I'm not sure, is it the key reason? Because I don't know how it, huh? how it happened, how it started. And some anamnese are so complex, some patient stories are so long, over 20 years, you can't say what's the key lesion. Yeah? And you find it, huh? and you feel that a lot of general tension is still disturbing it. So maybe it's good always to think, and that's what I mean with having a general attention how is the body accessible? How is the body uh, able uh, to also give a good feel uh, when the key lesion gets a release? Yeah? And most of the time, the key lesion gives a hypermobility. That's the reason why the key lesion we treated in an, with indirect techniques, with a follow the listening and an induction, uh, or it has, as we take John pleasure, has a very high activity because the key lesion is the, is the, um, is the energy cyst. Yeah?
So the rest, if we take 0.45 and 6, huh, there's still, I, I treated almost the whole of the body, the hole in the key, huh, but there are still some rest restrictions that I need huh, in the ventral parietum and the dorsal parietum. And that is what we said, because if we're not doing well, the first point, we do, the thing that we're going to do, we're going inflection, in adduction, and under rotation. So the ventral parietum, the viscera, and also the vascular system belongs to, gets restricted. Yeah? And if we're able to open this, so we're talking about rest restrictions, yeah? Yeah? only the rest, only the restrictions that we didn't solve until that moment. After that, we do the dorsal restrictions, maybe the spine, and also the neural, because the neural is very, very concentrated on the dorsal part. Of course, the nerves are also going uh, to the organs, but if we see the spine, if we see the, um, the brain, everything, it's more the dorsal system. Uh, and that's what we do the rest. That doesn't mean that the key lesion can be a spine, it can be an organ, it can be everything. Yeah? After done all this work, point one to five, we're gonna check up the diaphragms and see if the blood runs free or the energy runs free through our diaphragms. You don't need to treat them anymore or because most of the time we did it, but we see how the transport of energy, which is, I think, very connected with the circulation. Yeah? It's easy to feel on that way how the circulation is doing because the diaphragms are very, uh, points who work, we, are more, we have more or less a longitudinal tension. Uh, these are the cross tensions that we have on this longitudinal system. Uh, and if we finish that, everything is free. Everything should be okay. And also sometimes people say, I'm not okay, but, uh, but that's the best that we can do. So if we see tissue, we work from peripheral to central, from global to local, and from superficial to deep. And that's the thing that we don't do with the innervation or the vascularization. That dart are the same. We start central and going to peripheral. We start with the brain for the, for the nerves and going to the periphery. If we take the vascular system, we start with the heart and we go to the periphery. So that's the other way around. And as I said, innervation, vascularization, like to come into a body who is more or less relaxed Huh? And then we can do the specific work on the nerves and the vascularization. That doesn't have to be always, but I think it's very helpful to do it. Always with focal attention and global awareness. Yeah? So if we see what we have on treatment, huh? and that's very nice what Alain and, uh, and Jean-Pierre did, huh? to, to organize this treatment, huh? to organize these difficult possibilities by having, uh, by, you can use for uh, approach on the vascular system and also on the nerve. Uh, very, some things are very similar, uh, other things are a little bit different. Uh, but since the arteries and veins uh, are considered to be inseparable, uh, we will have, if we treat the arteries, we also have automatically treat the veins. Uh, and if we speak of the vascular particular, we mean the arterial venous system. So by treating the arteries, you more or less also treat the venous system because it's very, very connected. Uh, and in some, some places, easy to find some veins, but sometimes it's very, very difficult. Uh, if we see the specific treatments, techniques that we have for the viscerovascular system, we have a glide induction, we have a stretch induction, uh, we have a compression, decompression induction, combined stretches, accordion techniques, uh, accordion technology. That's what I wrote and visceral irrigation techniques. So we're going to look at them one after another. So we did our investigation. Yeah? We did look, is it a medical or osteopathic problem? Osteopathic um, investigation is a lot of listening and also tests that we have. Yeah? And now we need to know what we have to do. We maybe released our general tensions yeah? and we're now on the point of releasing yeah? Uh, a vascular uh, structure. So we have the glide induction, and the glide induction is, is very, very nice, it's very, very sensitive, huh? and it works with the reflexivity because a lot of nerves huh, you have, if you see the, the surface of the artery, especially on the outside, is covered with, uh, with nerves who have a very high sensitivity huh, and can be easy, uh, sometimes irritated. Yeah? So 
the, te the technique therefore is uh, to caress or stroke the artery. Uh, it's more like uh, going with your finger very, very slowly and sensitively, sensitively over, the, over the vessel. Uh, with this technique, uh, induction means that the tissue always is encouraged to expand in the free range of its movement. Uh, and most of the time, it's going distally. Uh, and we work on the, uh, on the very, very fine network uh, on the covering of this uh, of this artery, uh, and 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 then we have also a very 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 strong reflex activity. I read I read it even um, both times because it's very important. Uh, irregulates irregularities in the vessels wall, uh, which are due to a local hardening or micro calcification or local el elasticity, can be positively influenced by this technique. And that's very, very important because sometimes uh, the, 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 the vessel is, is very, um, needs a very gentle treatment because you never know how irritated it is. You never know that you're gonna irritate him too much. This always gives you a possibility to be very, very sensitive with this, with this, uh, with this vessel. Uh, I use it very, very much. Uh, Arteries of the muscular type, you have two types. You have the elastic type, uh, that's more the artery and so on. You have more the muscular type, uh, and uh, who has the possibility can make the vessels uh, uh, narrow and wide, uh, narrow and wide. Uh. More the larger arteries have it uh, and can be treated with stretch induction techniques. And that means uh, you could stretch them and the mechanoreceptors in the middle layer uh, of this vessel's wall are stimulated. Uh. So on the other hand, you're gonna pull it in the length, uh, that gives a new length or a relaxation. And on the other hand, you give a very strong input of the mechanoreceptors. These mechanoreceptors going to the brain and giving a very positive uh, feedback to the brain about the vessels that we have and it helps also to regulate sometimes uh, your vascularization better. Uh, the induction is carried out in the three-dimensional direction, so not only in longitudinal, also in transverse or depth. Uh, yes, we might think by stretching that we mean uh, we take the, the vessel in our hand and we stretch it only in one direction. Also, the transverse mobilization is a stretch and sometimes even finer than the longitudinal. And also by pushing on the, you have this Saint-Venant effect, uh, by pushing on the vessel, you have a very, very slight stretch uh, of, this, of this artery. Uh, increased longitudinal tension and loss of, attentional, loss of elasticity can be reduced uh, with this treatment approach. Uh, so we have now uh, the, um, the glide induction, the stretch induction, and now we have the compression and the decompression. Uh, and that's the compression and decompression we use uh, a lot of times when the artery is sometimes not fully palpable. Uh, we only have a very small part we can access. Uh, and this is then a very, very local technique uh, and, the transmitting uh, and, and the transmitting effect can be very, very helpful. Uh, a light pressure is giving into the artery uh, to wake up these mechanoreceptors. Uh, and, and, and sometimes you feel a listening coming up, uh, but most of the time you already do a little bit too much. By let it come back, let it come back a little bit, you feel a more intense listening uh, and you go a little bit away from the liquid and you feel that the tissue is showing you exactly where to go. Even your viscoelastic system, uh, as we can see the wall of a vessel, uh, helps you to show you exactly where to go with your listening. Yeah? And of course, follow the return always with an induction. Uh, a fingertip or a thumb uh, offers a sufficient contact surface uh, that positively uh, can loosen even this hardening. So it's very local restriction uh, or the loss of elasticity. This type of sensitive compression and decompression of the vessel, for example, can use very well when treating the celiac trunk or the aortic bifurcation. Yeah. 
That's what I'm going to show you an example afterwards. Uh, we have combined techniques uh, where, uh, where long run, and that's a little bit the step two. That's why step two, long facial chain linking. Uh, you can see the artery as a very, very long lever, as a very long structure. Uh, the artery, you have your central restriction, but you also feel that the whole artery, the whole fascia, the whole leg, more or less, also is pulling on this part that you have. You can use the combination of being local, and you can use the long lever of the leg. Uh, always be certain that you can use the leg as a lever. Sometimes you, most of the, often, sometimes you have to work first on the leg a little bit, so it is a very helpful lever. Uh, and as um, still says in his treatment, you have the screw, the lever, and the wedge. Uh, the lever is always very, very helpful to increase the intention that you have on the local area. And on the other hand, uh, by being local on one point and adding a stretch, uh, on the other hand, you can also, holding back an organ or holding back an artery and do a movement with an extremity, so also you can create a long lever. And that's the thing the osteopathy like. Osteopathy is the, ther th is the th therapy of the long levers. Uh, to fix an artery point during the movement, uh, oh, the principle of this technical vari variant is to fix an artery point during the movement of a part of the body. Yeah, I like it very much. Yeah? I, like to, I like very much to work with long levers because you have so much energy input and by, we have, we have said, we have a focal intention yeah? and we have a global awareness. And with these long lever techniques, you add the global, you add the body into this one point. I think it's very interesting to do. Also a very nice thing is, and that's uh, the accordion technique, and that has to do if you see the structure or if you have, if you see how sometimes uh, the vessels are organized, uh, like a serpentine thing, uh, or like a, uh, like a knot, or like a, uh, something that is very um, uh, strongly torqued or uh, strongly curved, uh, you can use a technique by bringing the arteries together and bring them back like a pumping. Yeah? You see, if you bring the arteries together, you get more place, you get also listening, and by letting coming back, again, maybe it's a letting follow the return or giving it a return. Yeah? It's very much like Sutherland always says, the most important, or, 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 or Jones said for this training counter strain, the most important part of the, the, the technique could be how you let the tissue come back. Huh? And especially with this accordion techniques, huh? you have such a good possibility of giving the compression, doing your mobilization, and let it come back. Huh? It will push you back because it will push you back as it fills. Huh? You feel that these tissues are free, the arteries like to fill, and you feel how this filling feels like a pushback. You give it a personal character by following the listening again, even huh, an induction by, yes, you're doing right, and you see you have a perfect technique. No? No? So you have also, and that's, huh, you have irrigation techniques huh, that we, we do. So we have uh, the, the, the accordion technique was a compression or decompression and uh, bring it together and bring it back. You can also see that the visual irrigation techniques are more or less the uh, same way of thinking. Uh, sometimes obesity, a lack of exercise, pure, uh, poor nutrition or older age give uh, very many restrictions and factor circulation and start for a, a very bad precondition for the good functioning of an organ or maybe a part of the body. Uh, some arteries are located beneath the organs, and if the organs swell or congest, the vessels are compressed. Uh, and if you get a compression in the body, you, you can wait if you get your adhesions or your fibrosis, uh, which can lead uh, to a displacement or restriction of the mobility of the vessels. Uh, so depending on where you are, depending on the orientation of the vascular pedicle and the position of the organ, you start lifting the organ. Uh, you take a little bit away, away the weight <coughs> of these structures. 
Yeah? And then gives you a good possibility to organize. And most of the time, uh, the lifting is against gravity. Uh, and, and if you see how long you have to do it, because sometimes it's good to work. If you feel that the tissue works a lot, and, but our experience said most of the times it's enough to do it 20 seconds and maybe you repeat it again. Uh, you repeat it again. So it gives the possibility on this vas vascular system to refill, uh, to explore itself again, uh, and then you bring back the organ on this, on this vessels again. That doesn't mean that the organ stays up, but the, 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 the mechanoreceptive stimuli on the nervous system gives an idea on the nervous system how it could be in a normal way. And that helps us again by if we want to increase the local blood flow, it maybe normalizes a little bit. We find a new point of balance, although the organ is still lying and maybe a little bit too much on the, on the tissue. Yeah? And I think it gives sometimes a very permanent functional impact. And especially a lot of people now in this time have the obesitas or the lack of exercises, uh, poor nutrition. Uh, and well, old people, yeah, okay then. But especially people are too thick, they don't move too much. Uh, it can be helpful very much and also helps uh, by starting up a treatment. Uh, so if we have another look at these uh, irrigation techniques, uh, how do we do it? Priority is to lift the organs uh, towards the large vessels thereafter. Uh, there is no reason not to mobilize across this axis. So you have a lifting and then you have more or less uh, uh, a mobilization uh, across the axis, uh, like you by, by lifting the, the liver uh, and then you do a lateral, lateral movement. Uh, uh, when mobilizing, for example, the uterine vessels that we have uh, a horizontal or orientation, we first use the accordion technique. We can do an accordion technique by compression and let it go. But if we feel a lot of restriction, you can do the accordion technique by compressing. It's the same as lifting. Eh? You can do a transverse movement on this area. That can be helpful. And then you have a very nice combined techniques. Eh? The lifting or pushing together, although it looks eh, like eh, it has a very, very nice stretching effect on the vessels. And then, of course, we have the irrigation technique. We have some circulation promoting techniques. We have proven very particularly to be effective in, in the lungs, liver, pancreas, stomach and intestines, thyroid, and also in the uterus. But I can think it's on every organ where if you know your anatomy and if you know what you're working on, I think you can use it on a lot of parts of the body also. So I put some uh, small case studies. Uh, I use them uh, maybe to show a few things that I uh, have happened in my practice uh, not so long ago uh, at a 30 year old man. And, and sometimes you need these, sometimes you need these cases uh, also for myself, how important it is to work on the vascular system. Because if I have a slight impingement, people have a, problem in the right shoulder. I know that, I don't know if it's because of Corona, we have a lot of impingement people now in the practice with their shoulder. Yeah? And the first thing I do, yes, I do a lot of uh, manual therapy work. I do a mobilization, free the area and strong. And of course, if it's the right shoulder, I take the liver and if the left shoulder, I take more or less the stomach or the organs, organs who are more on the left. But in this case, and that's the reason I find it so uh, very interesting. I had a very strong listening going to liver. He was suffering on his shoulder, uh, not so much, uh, not slight impinge, but had, 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 had a little bit of pain or, uh, and, and, and moderate restrictions there. Uh, I only had a listening going to the liver. Uh, and I start mobilizing the liver. Uh, and I felt how bad the pulse of the celiac, celiac arteria and the hepatic arteria was. Uh, and I start moving. The, 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 the liver, it became a little bit better, or it became, yes, it became better. But, but starting this, treating the hepatic artery, huh? it took only a few times, and with, with, with an impingement, really, that is sometimes, what, it, what, what has the vascularization of the liver to do with the impingement sometimes, I think, because you have locally a very strong compression. Four treatments, he was almost free 
of his symptoms. Eh? And that's, these are for me very motivating things to say, hey, you can't forget any structure. You have to think, as an osteopath, you have to think of all the structures. Eh? It's like the plumber going, thing. you need your tools eh, to be eh, as I believe yes, that only 38 years. People come into my office, she had a pelvic problem, eh, and who intensified around mes menstruation, see a lot of problems more. Uh, I find a very limited pelvic mobility. Uh, started working on her, start working on the visceral tension of the uterus, uh, did some general, did some GOT, general osteopathic techniques. Uh, I loosened the pelvis very, very, uh, very, very good, uh, reduced the general, general tension. But the very, very important thing was. I started doing an accordion technique with her, and I felt like a musician by working on this 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 uterus, huh? and it reduced the attention so gigantic, not only in the uterus but also in the whole pelvis. After three treatments, uh, with an interval of two weeks, uh, the patients didn't have any problems anymore. These are maybe unique cases. Huh? I would like to treat all these people in two three times. Sometimes it's more, sometimes shorter, but. Huh? Uh, but uh, it shows how important to be to get your focus also sometimes on the vascular system. Uh, so if we see a little bit what we're going to do in the class, I have to give you an idea uh, what how these things could look or how we're going to work on them. I took a very uh, very special area, uh, this this pancreasplenic area, uh, because we have a lot of arteries over there. Uh, we have this celiac truncus, we have the uh, superior um, mesenteric artery, we even have the inferior mesenteric area. This area is very, very covered with arteries uh, and has a very strong uh, vascularization going to the spleen. It takes in the duodenum and also the pancreas. I love to treat the pancreas. Uh, and these are the techniques that we're going to do. Uh, and the first on the two pictures on the left, uh, you see two uh, forms of accordion techniques, uh, which I also did. This is not uh, this is not my hands. These are uh, pictures from the workbook uh, that we have, or pictures from the the American book that we use. Uh, you see an accordion technique uh, by seeing on the upper picture on the left side. You see the the left hand uh, with a watch on it from the who who gives a stabilization on the, 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 the spleen and the, and the pancreas. And you see the other hand who brings the pancreas or the organs or even the duodenum close to the pancreas uh, to do an harmonization or harmonic and accordion technique uh, on these complicated structures that we have a wonderful technique. And using gravity a little bit different uh, by putting patient sideline, uh, it's also a very helpful way to do it. Very, very nice te techniques for a very important area who is very, very much forgotten. And if you see on the right side on top, you see a simple stretch uh, where our focus is not only on the, on the pancreas, our focus is also on the arteries who run there, also on the, even on the internal or the, 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 the tissues just around uh, the pancreas. If you go back, uh, you see this uh, uh, the Lionel artery. Uh, you also see the inferior pancreatic artery, who looks, runs a little bit more in the back of the pancreas. Uh, so here we have a lot of nice release, light of traction technique, uh, a stretch, what we do. Uh, and on the, on the other hand, you see also a civilet caudate mobilization. If we go back uh, to this picture again, you see this uh, greater pancreatic artery who's going from cranial to caudal. Uh, you also see the, uh, the, pan the dorsal pancreatic artery uh, who goes from, uh, from cranial to dorsal uh, with these techniques by pushing down the organ, pushing down. Also, the vessel comes from the artery, from the lienal artery going to the pancreas, giving a very, very slight stretch with an induction. Uh, it's a wonderful technique. Uh, also, no organ. Uh, we have two of them. We have the, the, the kidneys. Uh, if we see on the right side, you see the two treatments. On the left side, you see an anat anatomic overview that we have is from Chima. And uh, you see the right kidney is very 
much involved with the liver. So by what we do is lifting the liver, lifting these vessels over there. Also taking the weight of the kidney already gives for the kidney, the right kidney, a release also on this, uh, on this, article of, on this uh, arteries or also on all these veins. Now the other hand, you can also do it on the left or the right side. Uh, if, uh, if you see the fingers putting over there, uh, you give a pull uh, going lateral on the right or left renal artery. Uh, and the, as I said, the right renal artery is more the liver artery uh, and the left renal artery is more or less, uh, we call it the genital artery. But the genital part more comes with the venous system uh, because the venous system and the arteries are so very close together. So you give a pull even on, the, if you do it on the left side, uh, on the, the renal vein of the, the, the renal vein on the left side, it also works very strong on the <coughs> on the genitals on the left side and also on the lumbar spine on the left side. So uh, example again by manipulation of the aortic arch uh, or aortic arch. Uh, you see the, the anatomical pictures the two. Uh, you see what possibilities that we have. Aortic arch is going on the right side, it's very on the surface. Going to the left is very, very deep. So we do a rotational technique, a stretch technique by going deep, deep, deep from surface right to deep to the left huh? and, and give a stretch on the aortic bow. And at the same time, we work huh, on the truncus uh, brachiocephalus on the, on the right side huh? and on the artery, subclavian artery and on the carotid artery on the left side, uh, because on the, we don't have this truncus on the, on the left side. Uh, and by taking these brachial arteries uh, by left and right side, if you see on this very right picture, uh, if we give a pull, yes, we give a pull on the arteries that go to the axillary area, but you also give a pull on this aortic bow. Uh, very, very nice techniques. A lot of things that we do, uh, if we do the upper body, is we're gonna do also do the head, we're gonna work, walk to the whole upper body. And if we do the class for the lower part, we do all the lower arteries. So at the end, uh, now we have almost, I always talk one and a half hour. So if we end, uh, if we do a clinical in the, uh, integration, uh, we have the central part uh, of the fluidity and the vitality, who says it's very important because what do arteries do? They bring the vitality in the periphery. Uh, and that's surrounded by a few things who are really important for us. Uh, does this fluidity or the vitality mean that it has a certain toxi toxicity? Uh, because uh, we don't, or the way that we eat is not very well, or we are very uh, unhealthy. And on the other hand, uh, it might be that we have not so much toxicity, but our attitude to life is very bad. We can do that with not very much with osteopathy. Uh, we have to change our food plan. Maybe we have to change our attitude of life, but mechanics, we're very good in mechanics uh, and mechanics skills give us, gives us uh, a better fluidity and vitality. And always think if you look on the right, does it mean a medical clarification? Uh, it's very important for the vascular system, for the heart, uh, because we have a lot of these, these problems, uh, medical problems, but uh, let it clear. If you're uncertain, it's no problem. But if it's clear, if it's for the patient clear, it's so good to treat it osteopathically. You can so do a perfect work with the vascular, vascular techniques you learned in these two classes. Uh, and of course, if we have a good examination, we have a perfect treat osteopathic, osteopathically. And yeah, we bring the the vitality, the energy in the periphery, uh, and we do a perfect work. So thanks for listening, uh, Cora, you, and also me, Rene. Thank you very much. That's it. Okay, great, Rene. Thank you very much. That was an excellent talk you just did. I appreciate that very much. Let's see if somebody has put in a question for you. Um, I Thank look you. into the chat now to see if somebody has done that. Uh, if you do have, any of you who are listening out there, do have a question, please put it to the chat now so when they have a chance to uh, answer. I did get an email. Uh, so let's see, the email was... Uh, oh.
from so everything Lusa, was so Lusa, Lusa, Lusa. or everything was so bad that it yeah. doesn't make any sense to ask questions. Yeah, so Nilsa uh, or Elaine and this Elaine says uh, hello currently osteopaths talk about interoception if the body hocks the lesion can we notice a different posture also you can compare the key lesion with the primary lesion so do you get that question Renee? no not so really okay i do know that uh, that the body hugs the lesion that's correct yeah so what is the with the primary lesion and the? Uh, I think uh, you said the key lesion, and she's asking, is that the primary lesion? I think that's the question. Yes. 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 That's the primary lesion, and if you have a primary lesion, you have a lot of compensations so or build around these uh, this this key lesion. So you have your primary force, maybe your primary trauma, working on a certain part. Uh, and then you have to compensate uh, and your compensate and compensation have a lot to do with equilibrium has a lot to do with being comfortable with it has a lot to do with being economical with it uh, and and if things stay longer you get more and more and more compensations that means they hug more or less the lesion because the lesion uh, can't explore itself it's not able to release itself so that's the reason why we need sometimes first uh, release the surrounding from the tension uh, to get into the key lesion so the key lesion can unfold uh, his energy yes and i think really that uh, answered the other question that that she had if the body hugs the lesion can we notice a different posture so there's a compensation pattern developing when yes. the body hugs the lesion yeah. and that and what still says what still says most of the time i'm working on the compensations uh, and and on a certain point i get the key lesion uh, and that's also what jean pierre says sometimes it's so difficult to find a key lesion uh, we first have to do some other things uh, and then on a certain point we come to the key lesion uh, and then it's hopeful because if this key lesion likes to have a surrounding tissue uh, that can uh, uh, give a right functional area for this key lesion because otherwise it stays tight and tight and you're not able to release it. That's the uh, people that come back in your office. Time after time, after time, after time. Okay, a different question from Peter of uh, Aarhus in Denmark. Oh, if Peter. the vessel is painful, is it then contraindicative? Sometimes it needs clarification, huh? because you can have uh, arter arteriitis. Uh, and that's a medical problem. And there is a different question here. Is there a risk for microcalcifications getting loose into the vessel from these treatments? That's what we have if we never know. Huh? And that's also the good thing that we have on the techniques that we do. Huh? Also this gliding induction that we have we can be so gentle so if we suspect that people have their uh arteriosclerosis and everything we can treat very 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 gentle yeah and if we do our techniques with a listening if we listen to the body and not overstretch it yeah, i think don't think you have to be serious concerned about by releasing any uh parts or any calc calcifications yeah? And it's a thing that we don't want, sure. Huh? Because for, on the other hand, that's the reason why we sometimes, if we suspect that a people or a patient could have this, huh? and especially older people, we will be more careful in what we do. And the techniques that Jean-Pierre and Jean-Alain do, if we do our listening, huh? we never overstretch this, this vascular system. Huh? But that's a very important question, a very important point. Super. Any one last question from anybody? Doesn't seem like it. Thank okay. you very much. Okay, so I will thank you, Rene. It's a pleasure to see you and uh, to hear you speak again. Yeah. Uh, here is a definitely uh, 
uh, concurring of that from Tracy saying, Rene, you rock. I agree. <laughs> I totally agree. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I have to repeat for you guys that uh, Rene is coming to Copenhagen in uh, February, the 5th to the 7th of February uh, 21, to teach the lower uh, legs vascular system for us. Uh, so, of course, I'm really happy if you sign up for that one. Also, I will tell you that uh, I am planning a few more webinars. Uh, that would be like a visceral manipulation introduction with myself and a neural manipulation introduction with Alex Fugalo and perhaps one or two more uh, within this month, ending up at the end of the month. So far for this round. Um, after class, you will receive an email with the possibility for finding this talk uh, on a YouTube link eventually. So, also for me, thank you for uh, attending. And thank, thank you, you very much I'm again. I'm still in Hamburg and have to go to Lübeck. <laughs> uh, a little nice drive home. Yeah, I will do. I have to take it, I have to catch the train. So that's uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for listening, you all. And hope to see you in next year. And Cora, nice to see you again. And we we keep in contact. We keep in touch. Yo, bye bye. Bye everybody. Bye.